There are some fish that cannot be caught. It's not that they are faster or stronger than other fish. They're just touched by something extra. One such fish was the beast. And by the time I was born, he was already a legend. He'd passed up more hundred dollar lures than any fish in Alabama. Some said that fish was the ghost of the thief who drowned in that river 60 years before. Others claimed he was a dinosaur left over from the Cretaceous period. I didn't put any stock into such speculation or superstition. And all I knew was I'd been trying to catch that fish since I was a boy no bigger than you. And on the day you were born, well, that was the day I finally caught him. Now, I tried everything on it. Worms, lures, peanut butter, peanut butter and cheese. But on that day, I had a revelation. If that fish was the ghost of Henry Walls, then the usual bait wasn't going to work. I was going to have to use something he truly desired. Your finger? Gold. Now, I tied my ring onto the strongest line they made. Strong enough to hold up a bridge, they said, if only for a few minutes. And then I cast up river. The beast jumped up and grabbed it before it even hit the water. And just as fast, he snapped clean through that line. Yeah, Don't I, you I, see my predicament? My wedding ring, the symbol of fidelity to my wife, is going to be mother of my child, but now lost in the gut of an uncatchable fish. What did you do? I followed that fish up river and down river. This fish, the beast, the whole time we're calling to him, when in fact it was a her. It was fat with eggs. It was going to lay them any day. Now, I was in a situation. I could gut that fish and get my wedding ring back. But in doing so, I became the smartest catfish in the Ashton River. Did I want to deprive my son of a chance to catch a fish like this of his own? His ladyfish and I, well, we had the same destiny. We were part of the same equation. Now, you may well ask. Oh, darn, darling, darn, it's still your night. Why did it strike you now on gold when nothing else would attract it? That was the lesson I learned that day. The day my son was born. Sometimes the only way to catch an uncatchable woman is to offer her a wedding ring. What, a father's not allowed to talk about his son? I'm a footnote in that story, Dad. I'm a, I, the context for your great adventure, which never happened, incidentally. You were selling novelty products in Wichita the day I was born. Come on, well, everyone loves that story. No, Dad, they don't. I don't love that story. Not anymore. Not after a thousand times. I, I, I know every punchline, Dad. I can tell them as well as you can. For one night, one night in your entire life, the universe did not revolve around Edward Bloom. How can you not understand that? I'm sorry to embarrass you. You're embarrassing yourself, Dad. You just don't see it. After that night, I didn't speak to my father again for three years. I'm uh, William Bloom, United Press International. If I could just, uh... We communicated indirectly, I guess. In her letters and Christmas cards, my mother would write for both of them. When I'd call, my mom would say Dad was out driving or swimming in the pool. True to form, we never talked about not talking. The truth is, I didn't see anything of myself in my father. And I don't think he saw anything of himself in me. We were like strangers who knew each other very well. In telling the story of my father's life, it's impossible to separate fact from fiction. 
the man from the myth. The best I can do is to tell it the way he told me. It doesn't always make sense, and most of it never happened. this is. His birth would set the pace for his unlikely life. No longer than most men's, but larger. And as strange as his stories got, the endings were always the most surprising of all. <laughs> Dr. Bennett say? No, sure. I'll talk to him. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait. It's bad. Uh, it's more than they thought. They're gonna stop chemo. You need to go. Probably tonight. I'm going with you. No, no. You shouldn't. It's... I'm going with you. Which one's it gonna be? Monkey in a barn or dog in a road? The one about the witch. Your mama says I can't tell you that one anymore. You get nightmares. Well, I'm not scared. Well, neither was I at first. Now, this took place in the swamp outside of Ashton. Now, children weren't allowed to go in the swamp on account of the snakes and the spiders and the quicksand that would swallow you up before you could even scream. There were five of us out there that night. Me, Ruthie, Wilbur Freely, and the Price brothers, Don and Zacky. And not one of us knew what was in store. Now, it's common knowledge that most towns of a certain size have a witch if only to eat misbehaving children and the occasional puppy who wanders into her yard. Witches use those bones to cast spells and curses and make the land infertile. 